Good morning, class. We are continuing with exam to review covering chapter three from 3.1 to 3.8. And in this part, we're going to cover 3.6 derivatives of the log and inverse trig functions. We're going to start with y equals ln x. What is the derivative of y equals ln x? We haven't done it yet. We don't know it. So what we do, we rewrite it using exponential function as e to the power of y equals x. And we know the derivative of exponential functions. We are going to use implicit differentiation. So the derivative of any exponential is itself. So it's e to the power of y. And as far as y is concerned, y is the same as g of x. So the derivative of y is y prime or dy dx. So e to the power of y times y prime. As you know, the derivative of x is 1. We are going to divide both sides. By e to the power of y. So these two cancel each other. And we're going to replace the e to the power of y with x, and we get 1 over x. Therefore, if y is ln x, the derivative is 1 over x. Simply put, flip this over. So the extension of that becomes if the derivative of, if you're interested in finding the derivative of ln x, you flip it over. By the way, the reason we put it in absolute value for the reverse process specifically, because as you know, the domain for uh, logarithmic functions is zero to infinity for the basic ln x, y equals ln x. And so if we have, instead of x, we have g of x. Again, we flip it over by this rule. And the g prime of x, this is by the chain rule. u represents g of x. So you can say g of x or u. If you go with u, then g prime of x is du dx. It's just a representation. It's just a representation. Nothing more, nothing less. All right, uh, reminding every one of logs, what they mean, their properties. And to have a better understanding, let's start from here and look at this arrow. So log x base b y. So this is the argument of log. This is the base. This is the exponent. Take a look at the arrow and follow this arrow b to the power of y is x. If we can see that, if we can go from logarithmic format to exponential format, practically we're done, okay? And that's all there is to it. So log is simply an exponent and nothing else. So with that being the case, I want you to look at all these properties that you've seen in intermediate algebra, college algebra, pre-calculus. So by now, we must have mastered it. So take a look at this arrow again b to the power of 0 is 1, b to the power of 1 is b, b to the power of x is b to the power of x. So the thing, the, the thing is it, it just follows, and these two refer to the fact that logarithmic functions, exponential functions, are inverse functions. Product rule, quotient rule, power rule. If we go with natural log where the base is e instead of l o g we use l n so if y equals l n x means e to the power of y equals x and so by the same token l n one is zero but just to make sure we understand number two number two says if the base and the argument are the same the base and the argument are the same the answer is one this one the moment you see l n that means the base is e so you choose E here, ln E becomes 1. Again, these two very obvious that logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverse functions. 
And of course, these three, the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, if we look at common log when the base is 10, when we write y equals log and there is no base, the base is 10 and therefore x equals 10 to the power of y. And look at all these uh, formulas, they repeat. I wanna again explain number two, if you go back to number two, the base and the argument are the same. The base is missing, that means the base is 10. If you have log, there is no base, the base is 10. Therefore you choose 10, it's one. Again, numbers three and four in all cases refer to the fact that logarithmic functions and exponential functions undo each other. Product rule, quotient rule, power rule, it repeats. Uh, obviously, the change of base formula, uh, log x base b is log x over log b, as long as we choose the same base, anything such as a. However, we each either choose base 10, common log or base e natural log because that's what the calculators can handle and then we discuss these derivative of ln x is 1 over x and if it's g of x is 1 over g of x times g prime of x later on we will look at the case where the base is uh, different and again 1 over x ln b i think we have actually covered that already so let's look at um, an example here. So we are interested in finding uh, the derivative for this function, y equals one half ln of one plus x over one minus x. Well, first and foremost, I want to decompose that because if I want to differentiate it the way it is, it it can be done. There is nothing wrong with that. It can be done. But here's here's the process. Uh, one half, and then you have to flip this over. And then you have to take the derivative of that using the quotient rule. Uh, can it be done? Yes, but it's a longer process. Instead, we are going to decompose this using the quotient rule. So one half, ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. So that's logarithmic property. And now, of course, this one half remains outside. Now we are going to work on each one. So one half remains. The first piece, we flip this over according to this formula, one over g of x, where g of x is just the parentheses one plus x. So flip this over one over one plus x. And then I need g prime. The derivative of the inside is one. So if you didn't write it in this case, would it make any difference? The reason I do, because we don't want to mix up. We want to make sure we understand why we are doing this. And so for the second part, minus, flip this over, one over one minus x, and the g prime, the derivative of the inside, and that's in interesting to see. The derivative of the inside is no longer one. It's actually negative one, negative one. And so you have the one half and you're done, by the way. This is the end of the story. As far as calculus goes, we are going to go to algebraic techniques to finish the job. So we do have the one half. We are going to take a common denominator, which is one plus X times one minus X. And then one times one, this two is one. So one times one minus X minus and minus plus one times one plus X. So this is what we have. And this is just one minus X. So all we have to do, simplify this. So the numerator is one minus X plus one plus x, as you can see, they add up to two, one half cancels out the two and the numerator becomes one. And the denominator one plus x times one minus x is one minus x squared.
ln of sine theta, we want to differentiate this. So according to this, flip this over. Flip the g, g of x, or in this case, g of theta. Remember, whatever the independent variable is, so be it. So flip this over, one over sine theta. And times the derivative of that. What is the derivative of sine? Cosine theta. Cosine theta over sine theta, cotangent theta. When you want to differentiate, you write the formulas. I'm assuming you have memorized the formula. So if I'm differentiating this, I'm going to write this formula. I'm going to follow that. I mentioned because some students have learned that in uh, no, high school, they use ddx of this, ddx of that. This is the faster way of doing this. Over here, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is e to the power of x times one minus e to the power of, it's not done properly here. So there's a typo here. I'll fix it, everybody. Times the denominator one. minus e to the power of x minus the derivative of the denominator, which is itself minus e to the power of x. So this one is Let's actually do this from the top. Let's just, it's easier that way. Y prime is equal to, the derivative of the top is e to the power of x times the bottom minus, as you can see, the derivative of the bottom is negative e to the power of x times the top e to the power of x. And you just write the bottom squared. So let's quickly recap before we continue. The top, the derivative is itself times the bottom. This is f prime g minus g prime minus this negative sign remains e to the power of x is itself, times f times the top, which is e to the power of x. This is the only calculus step you have. We are going to uh, finish this off. So I'm going to write in the numerator with a different color. So when I distribute, I get e to the power of x minus e to the power of x times e to the power of x is e to the power of 2x, and then plus e to the power of 2x. And as you can see, these two cancel each other. So the final answer is e to the power of x over one minus e to the power of x quantity squared. So that's the final answer, y prime. All right, so we're going to move on to the next question. We are interested in differentiating y equals log base 3 of square root of x. The previous page, I went through it fast because there was some typo there, so that's why. Okay. 
you want to differentiate these functions and um, whenever we want to differentiate the log, we, where we have a different base time than E, then we want to use logarithmic properties. And I'm going to remind you that this is ln x over ln b, and therefore it makes it 1 over ln b times ln x. So one easy way to recognize that is just the change of base formula. And by the way, this can be rewritten in this format. And what is ln b? ln b is a number, everybody. So it's like 1 over 5, 1 over 10. So 1 over ln b is just a coefficient. So when you're differentiating this, in essence, you're differentiating ln x. So you're going to say the same thing. So this is a number, you write it. And then you know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So you're going to write it in that fashion. So what is y prime? This thing times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. And the way we write it is as follows, 1 over x ln b. That's how we write this. Now, what if we want to take the derivative of a log of f of x base b? So this was log x base b. But what if it's a function? We follow the same format as log. First and foremost, we flip this over. So we could have done the same thing here. If we flip this over. And so we have 1 over f of x. Then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by f prime of x. So by the chain rule, we could have multiplied by the derivative of that, which is simply one. We don't have to worry about it because it's x instead of g of x. When it's g of x or f of x, you flip it over. Finally, you look at the base. If the base is e, we are done. This is times. Now it's times, the next one, times f prime of x. Now, if the base is e, we are done. If not, 1 over ln b by logarithmic properties. 1 over ln b is by logarithmic properties. You're done. You just rewrite it. The way we rewrite this is 1 over fx ln b times f prime of x. That's the way we do the revision. Okay. If I want to do this, how do I tackle that? Well, you may notice that square root of x is the same as x to the power of 1 half. And we can use the power rule to put the 1 half in front, and that would make life easier always use logarithmic properties if you must. Then what do we do? Well, we want to differentiate this. Y prime equals one half remains. So just write one half. Whatever this one is, flip it over one over X. Then there is no derivative because it's X is not a function of X. You look at the base, is the base E? If so, we are done. If not, 1 over ln of the base, 1 over ln of the base, so 1 over ln 3. We're done, we just rewrite it. We put them together in the following fashion. 1 over 2 x ln 3. By the way, the reason we put the ln 3 at the end, because if you put ln 3 before 2x, one may read it as ln of 32x, so this is the proper way of writing. All right, first and foremost, can we simplify this? And the answer is no. That's extremely important to know that we can't simplify it. Therefore, we differentiate f prime of x, we flip this over, first and foremost. So one over x squared plus one. By the chain rule, I need g prime of x, by the chain rule, the derivative of this piece is 
2x. Finally, what is the base? Is the base E? No. So one over ln five, one over ln five. I'm done. I'm just gonna rewrite it. And here's the proper way of rewriting this, everybody. All right, ln of 5x over x squared plus 5. We can decompose this completely, which is ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. I'm talking about number 6. ln of the top is ln of 5x. And ln of 5x is itself ln of 5 plus ln x. So ln of 5 plus ln x minus ln of the bottom. I hope nobody has any problem with this. We are decomposing the log first. Now we are going to differentiate one by one. As you know, this is a number. Whether I have ln5 or 5 itself or e or pi or 2.1 or 10,000, the derivative is zero. So this gives you zero. This gives you one over x. So you can, if it helps you write down zero, plus one over x. So you see this, this is a number, the answer is zero. Now, how do we differentiate this? Anytime you have a natural log, you decompose it. We've already done that. So flip this over, one over x squared plus five. And then by the chain rule, we are going to multiply by its derivative, which is, so I'm in essence writing this formula. So I'm gonna multiply by two x and I'm done with the calculus. I'm gonna add them up using LCD, which is x times x squared plus five. And so this one is one times x squared plus five. And this one is minus two x times x. And so we have x squared plus five minus two x squared. These two add up to negative x squared. So negative x squared uh, plus five is the answer here. Negative x squared plus five. All right, we want to differentiate this. And again, we notice we can use the power rule to take the four and put it in front as a coefficient. So we decompose the law. Uh, it is important for everybody to understand there is nothing more we can do to decompose the law. This can't be separated. And so how do we differentiate this? Well, number four is a coefficient that doesn't go away. Then because we are differentiating log, we're gonna flip this over one over nine minus x cubed. So in essence, we are looking at this one everywhere. So I would put this formula next to me next time. So first I have this formula, decompose it. Then I have this formula. So I'm gonna put one over g of x of one over nine minus x cubed and then g prime of x. I need the derivative of the parentheses, which is negative three x squared. And then I go back and I look at the log. Is the base e? No. The, the base is missing, that means the base is 10. So one over ln b I need. So one over ln 10. This has got to do with logarithmic property, more specifically the change of base formula. 
And we are done with calculus. We just rewrite it. As you notice, this one, this one, this one, and this one, they're all for the numerator. These two in the denominator. Only these two. So we have a four times one times negative three, negative 12 X squared in the numerator. Negative 12 X squared in the numerator. These two, and you put it in this fashion. Again, why am I not putting ln 10 in front? Because one may think that nine minus X cubed is a part of its argument as well. We don't want that. All right, we want to find the equation of a tangent line, which means we need two things. We need a pair, x comma y is given, and we need the slope, which means we have to differentiate using the product rule. So I'm going to put a raised dot in between, and I'm going to call this the f function. This is the g function, and I'm going to use the product rule on that. F prime is 2x times, L, times g ln x. And then plus g prime, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x times x squared. So f prime g plus g prime f. So this is 2x ln x. This one just cancels out, and it gives us only x. Now we are going to plug in the pair, which means we are going to plug in x equals one. That's the meaning of it. So this is one way to write that. M is y prime evaluated at one zero. And that really means because it's explicitly a function of x, you can say y prime of one. That means just plug in one instead of x. So if I do that, 2 times 1 times ln 1 plus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times ln 1 plus 1. I hope you know ln 1 is 0. Therefore, the answer is 1. So I want to make sure. So ln 1 is 0. So the answer is 1. And so we are going to use y minus y1 was m times x minus x of 1, which means y minus 0 equals 1 times x minus 1. OK, so y equals x minus 1 is the final answer. It is important to know this is the x-intercept. This is not the y-intercept 0, comma b that you can use y equals mx plus b. So you have to go through this process. And it's a very straightforward process. We want to differentiate the log of 1 plus theta ln 3, base 3. And we are going to uh, see if we can simplify the log first. It can't be done. We're going to tackle it just the way it is. So there is nothing else we can do. We are going to go with this and flip this over. Remember, this is the argument of log, by the way. When you see theta, that means you don't, you're don't. you not dealing with x or t. Your independent variable is theta. So flip this over, first and foremost. Then times g prime of x. We are in essence here, but f prime of x, g prime of x, times the derivative of this function. And I want to discuss that because I want to make sure you understand what's going on. This is 1. The derivative is 0. Theta times ln 3. The reason they put the ln3 uh, in the back, because it's a number. It's like 5 theta. Imagine ln3 was number 5, then you would have 5 theta, and the derivative would become 5. Because it's theta times ln3, the derivative of this expression is this number. ln3 is some number. The difference is the precise number. Okay? So 
The derivative of this function, so if I'm going by this or if I'm going by this part, the derivative of this parenthesis is only ln3. And then I need one over ln b. Because this is not e, I have to divide by natural log of whatever this number is. So one over ln3. So this is because of the logarithmic property, the change of base formula. And these two cancel each other, everybody. Again, this because of the chain rule. Okay. This is the change of base formula. And so that's the final answer. One over one plus theta in three. You may recall, just to remind you again and again, this expression is the same as putting the log at top with natural log over ln three. This expression is equal to that. And this may help it easier to see why we have this as the answer and we have this one over ln3 which is at the end here it's really in the beginning you can write it as you can write this as one over ln3 which is a number which is a number and then times ln of one plus theta ln3 and now you can differentiate that either way is fine all right how about this expression anytime you're dealing with logs you're going to ask yourself can i simplify it before i move on well let's decompose this is ln a bunch of stuff x times y times z x times y times z imagine so ln of x that means ln of two, ln of y, that means ln of e to the power minus t, ln of z, that means ln of sine t. So x, y, z, you're multiplying three pieces. So ln two plus ln of e to the power minus t plus ln of sine t. Now this one you should recognize as minus t. Again has got to do with the exponential rule. So this piece is just minus t. Now we are going to differentiate piece by piece. ln2 is a number, its derivative is zero. This part, we said it's negative t, so the answer is negative one. This part, so this, this is zero minus t gives us minus one. Let's differentiate this ln of sine t, we had seen it before, we flipped this over as one over sine t, and then we multiply by the derivative of that, which is cosine t, cosine over sine becomes cotangent. So we have a y prime equals negative one plus cotangent t, or one might write it as cotangent t minus one. Either way is fine. All right, we want to differentiate this. And again, it's a good practice to simplify before we move on. So this is the product of t and the logarithmic expression. So what we are going to do, we're going to see what we can do to simplify, if possible, the logarithmic expression. And you may notice we have e to the power of sine t and ln3. And so if we put e and ln3 next to each other, so we rewrite this log in the following manner. So e to the power of ln3, I hope you see that nothing has changed. The difference is we should recognize e to the power of ln x is x. So e to the power of ln3 is three. So this expression gives us three. 
now. Log the base is three, three to the power of sine t. I hope you see that basically this is sine t, but you can bring the sine t in front and write log three base three. This is one, this thing is one. So t times sine t. So this expression after a few uh, logarithmic steps becomes this expression. And this is a simple product. So first, all of these steps are logarithmic properties. So t gives you one times sine t. And then sine gives you cosine t times t. And you just rewrite this as sine t and this t comes in front because we don't want anybody to be under the assumption this is t squared. It is extremely important that you put it in front. So sine t plus t cosine t. <clears throat> we want to differentiate this and the more complicated the ex the expression the better to use the logarithmic differentiation logarithmic differentiation basically means use logarithmic properties to make life easy and then differentiate. I hope you recognize that this is extremely difficult. Not that it's impossible, but you have to differentiate uh, using the quotient rule in conjunction with the chain rule, and it becomes very difficult. So the, the, the process is very simple. First and foremost, we take the natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log of the so let's just do it like this. So this is ln of y equals ln of the right side. Now, what happens to the right side? I can simplify. And this is what I want to show you in one shot. I hope everybody can follow that. ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. Ln of the top is ln of this piece plus ln of the this of this piece. Maybe I, I write it at least you know one step. So this one is ln of the top. And I'm going to write x squared plus one to the power of one half minus ln of 3x plus 2 to the power of 5. So I, I use this step also. Now this will become the ln of this part plus ln of this part. So this is 3 fourths ln x. This is 3 fourths ln x plus 1 half ln of x squared plus 1 minus 5 ln of 3x plus 2. So you should be able to go from here to here in one shot. ln of the left side is equal to the ln of the right side, and the right side can be completely decomposed. And so what do we do? Now we are going to differentiate both sides. What is the derivative of ln y? Remember, y is like g of x. What is the derivative of ln of g of x is 1 over g of x times g prime of x. So the left side is 1 over y dy dx or y prime. So differentiate implicitly with respect to x. So 1 over y dy dx. What is this one? 3 fourth ln x gives you 1 over x. What is this one? 1 half. And then flip this over. 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. What is this one? Minus 5. Then flip this over. 1 over 3x plus 2 times 3. Okay, so the order here is not correct, everybody. 
so this is the this is the one I'm looking for. I will. So one over y d y d x is by the chain rule three fourth l and x is one over by the uh, implicit differentiation l and x is one over x one half one over x squared plus one times two x minus five one over three x plus two times three and basically we are done with the differentiation so we multiply both sides by y this goes away so one over y goes to the other side becomes a product of y and this mess so we write it as dy dx is y times and now we make this one as three over four x we make this one two and two go away so we get x over x squared plus one and this one is minus five times 350. finally we replace the y here's the last step solve for dy dx we replace the y with whatever it was given in the first place and you're done i hope you see it's a very complicated work if we want to tackle it just the way it is it can be done but it's going to be very difficult when you come to this part most people don't have to Combine it because this is tough. No, it takes some time. It's not, it's, it's algebraic technique. But you can take, if you want, the common denominator would be the product of all three and then go through the process. You don't have to do that. This is good enough. The purpose of the logarithmic differentiation is just to understand we can take a natural log of both sides. That's really the key. Here's a, another example where you do logarithmic uh, differentiation when the base and the exponent uh, are both uh, functions such as x to the power of sine x. So to do the logarithmic differentiation, the first step is to take a natural log. So if I take a natural log of the left, left side is ln y, natural log, log of the right side, I can put the sine x in front. It happens as such. ln of the right side, I can put the sine x in front. So it's sine x times ln x. You can think of it. It may not be a bad idea to put a raised dot. Let me just in between. Okay, that's sine x times ln x by the power rule property this one of logs this becomes this by number seven everybody now we're going to differentiate implicitly ln y always becomes one over y y prime or dy dx and sometimes i put y prime sometimes i put dy dx and i do it on purpose to refresh everyone's memory that's the same thing now this one ln x to uh, sine x, I'm going to use the product rule on this piece. Sine gives me cosine times ln x. ln x gives me 1 over x times sine x. So let me put the f and g at top of this so it becomes clear. On the right side, I have f times g. So I have f prime g plus g prime f. And so basically, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. If if I want to get rid of 1 over y, I put it on the other side times y, and I'm going to replace the y with x to the power of sine x. There's really not much you can, you have to do it. Just multiply by y. You write this. This is cosine x ln x. This is 1 over x sine x. So the y goes to the other side, and it's replaced by the given y, x to the power of sine x. All right, uh, inverse trig functions, the derivative of uh, sine inverse is one over square root of one minus x squared. Cosine is the same thing with the negative at top. Tan is one over one plus x squared. Cotangent is the same as tan with the negative sign. So that's the relationship between sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent. Secant is one over x times the square root of x squared minus one and cosecant inverse, the same thing with the 
negative sign. Um, so just to refresh your memory, when we say sine inverse x equals y, by definition means sine y equals x. And as you recall, y is between negative pi over two and pi over two because none of the trig functions uh, are one to one. None of them has a as an inverse unless we do the restriction. As as you recall, for the sine, we did the restriction from negative pi over two to pi over two for sine x, and that becomes the range for its inverse. And therefore, reminding everyone that sine inverse of sine x equals x, sine of sine inverse of x equals x. The assumption is in this case, x is between negative and pi over two, pi over two and positive pi over two. In this case, x is between negative one and one, otherwise it doesn't work. And for the cosine, remember we did the restriction for the cosine from zero to pi because we wanted to cover all the positive and negative values. The first quadrant cosine was positive. The second one was negative, whereas sine in the second was positive also. So we used the fourth quadrant. So cosine inverse cosine, cosine of cosine inverse would be x as long as this is followed. And of course, we can just write a few of them. The only thing I want to add is this. If instead of x, we have u, which means g of x then we are going to replace the x with u or g of x and then by the chain rule times du dx or g prime of x so instead of saying times that you can say you can put it at top it has the same meaning okay if it makes it easier to understand write the one at top and then times the u dx this has got to do with the chain rule now so we have this, and the sine inverse is uh, one over square root of uh, one minus x squared. What we want to do, we want to quickly show the proof for one of them at least. And so just to remind everybody how we arrive at it. So we are going to rewrite this expression. If we let sine inverse x be y, by definition, sine y is x. So I'm using this, which we wrote in the previous page, and it's a trigonometric. Uh, function and its inverse. Now we are going to look at this one and we're going to differentiate this implicitly. So we want to look, we want to prove this and we're going to prove a couple of them quickly so you can do the rest on your own. Sine, the derivative is cosine. Sine, just pause, the derivative is cosine. But whatever the uh, argument is you're going to write so cosine of what whatever that you have here y and because y is like g of x then by the chain rule times g prime of x or y prime or dy dx and x gives you one so take a look cosine of y dy dx equals one therefore dy dx is one over cosine y all right if sine y is x, what is cosine y? I hope you remember sine squared plus cosine squared is one, therefore it's a square root of one minus sine squared. And by the way, it's plus minus. Why is it plus? Because of the restriction on this, the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant, cosine is positive. So everything has to fall into place and they do. So again, this is plus minus in general, but in between it's only plus. And so we can replace this with square root of one minus sine squared y. But what was sine y? X, so I'm gonna replace the sine y with x and I get square root of one minus x squared. And now this is the answer. And believe it or not, that's the proof. We are done with the proof that if y is sine inverse, its derivative is one over square root of one minus x squared. Um, let's quickly do that for tangent also. So in the case of a tan inverse of x, if it's y by definition, it means tan y equals x. And again, if you remember, the restriction was the same as sine, except the endpoints couldn't be because we had a vertical asymptote, if you remember the basic graph. And so we want to prove that the derivative of the tangent 
inverse is one over one plus x squared. So we are going to use this and differentiate this expression implicitly. So what is the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the answer is secant squared. And remember, y is the same as g of x. So times g prime of x or times y prime or times dy dx. And x gives you y. So secant squared y, dy dx equals 1, divide by secant squared. And dy dx is 1 over secant squared y. And we are going to go over Pythagorean identities again. 1 plus tan squared y is secant squared y. Whatever this is, same thing here. Whatever, x, x, y, y, z, z, right? That's one of those Pythagorean identities. And we know that tan y is x. So we can replace this with x squared. So therefore, if secant, y square, secant squared y is 1 plus x squared, let's replace it. And therefore, we proved the derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right, uh, we are going to differentiate y equals e to the power of 10x times tan inverse of x. Please understand we are going to use the product rule. Maybe I put a raised dot in between. So it's the product of e to the power of 10x. I'm going to call it the f function. And 10 inverse of x, I'm going to call it the g function. So uh, e to the power of 10x, the answer is itself times the derivative of 10x, which is 10. This is f. Let me just write this also. When we want to differentiate this, we get f prime g plus g prime f. So what we are looking at, this is just f prime times g tan inverse plus g prime. What is the derivative of tan inverse? Is 1 over 1 plus x squared times g prime. So that's g prime times f e to the power of 10x. So let me also write this at top. I want to make sure we are comfortable with the concept. Therefore, we are looking at f prime g plus g prime f. And we just rewrite this. That's all we have to do. So 10 e to the power of 10x tan inverse of x plus e to the power of tan x over 1 plus x. Good. We just rewrote that and we are done. And that's all there is to it. Let's uh, differentiate cosecant inverse of e to the power of x. Now, again, I want to remind everybody that what happens when this is x, we have the basic differentiation. When it's g of x or u, then we have this du dx. And not only that, anywhere you see x, in any of those formulas, it has to be replaced with g of x, or in this case, e to the power of x. So I would start with the cosecant inverse. I see a negative one, I put it at top. I put um, x times square root of x squared minus one. Please understand, in the case of a secant, we have one. In the case of a cosecant, we have negative one. So I'm using this formula, and I didn't put the x there. Why? Because my expression here is not x. So it's e to the power of x. Notice what's going to happen. So I wrote this. And instead of x, I put a parenthesis. So this is my function. So I'm going to replace the parenthesis with e to the power of x. Okay, so pay attention to this and what happened. And now 
by the chain rule, I need du dx for this one, for that one, for each and every one of them. What is the derivative of this times that? So I hope you realize this one is du dx or g prime of x or the chain rule. This is by the chain rule. So I can drop these two, right? And I'm going to write the rest of it. And that's the final answer. Again, the numerator is negative one. It remains. This one is e to the power of two x. And that's how you rewrite the final answer. It's very straightforward, everybody. All right, I'm going to differentiate this. And again, notice that we are multiplying these two and I'm going to do put the raised dot here and this is your f times g which means we are going to use f prime g plus g prime if you get to the habit of writing the formulas and just follow them it's a lot easier uh, than any other method so uh, starting with x, the derivative is 1 times sine inverse of 3x. So 1 times sine inverse of 3x. This is f prime g. Now we're going to go with g prime f. So sine inverse. I want to differentiate this. I don't want to show you how to do that again. Uh, reminding you that when we have a u, okay, so the x is replaced with u and or g of x. And by the chain rule, we have du dx or g prime of x. So I'm going to do the same method as I did uh, in the previous page. So plus, and I'm going to put this, in fact, I'm going to put this one, if you will, and uh, put a parenthesis instead of x. So meaning, what do we have to put in? Just this is the function that you are going to use. So I want to make sure everybody understands what's going on. We are dealing with the G prime. So since it's a sine inverse, you can write this one, this one, it doesn't matter. So now following this, whatever the U is, okay? So you put the 3X here. And over here is the UDX, the UDX. What is the derivative of 3X is three. So over here, you put 3X. Over here, you put the derivative of this whatever it might be it happened to be three so again i want to make sure we understand that we are dealing with this u is 3x and the u dx or you can say g of x is 3x and g prime of x is three this is g prime times f times x so let me write this at top here's f prime g here's g prime F, and all we have to do, just rewrite it, we are done. X times cosine inverse X minus square root of one minus X squared. That's what we want to differentiate. So again, I put a raised dot in between here for this piece. Uh, we use a product rule and one minus X squared to the power of one half. So we can do the extended power rule on that. So we want to differentiate this. F prime G plus g prime f. So the derivative of x, which is one times g, which is cosine inverse. So one times cosine inverse. This is f prime g, everybody. So we are looking at these two pieces, f times g, never mind this piece yet. x gives you one times g. Now plus g prime plus cosine inverse. Remember, this is sine, cosine is the same thing with the negative at top of it we have here. So minus one over the square root of one minus x squared. So plus 
plus negative one over the square of one minus x squared times x. And this is g prime f. So f prime g, g prime f. Let me just write it at top of it. So we are looking at f prime g plus g prime f. And at this, use the extended power rule, one half, one minus x squared to the power of one half minus one or negative one half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative two x. So one half, the same thing to the power of negative one half by the chain rule, the derivative of that is negative two x. And believe it or not, this whole thing is the only calculus step. Of course, it looks nasty, but nevertheless, it's really not too bad. Everything else is algebraic technique. We are going to simplify it as follows. So the first one is simply cosine inverse. The second one is minus x over squared of one minus x squared. So the second one is minus, right? Because plus and negative one, minus x over one minus x squared. We're going to simplify this. First and foremost, understand that this cancels out this one, negative and negative becomes a positive. So let me write this at top of it. So plus, one over one minus x squared to the power of one half times x, right? So plus that. And we're gonna change the denominator to a square root. And these two now cancel each other. So the final answer is cosine inverse of x. And I hope you see that there are a bunch of algebraic techniques and steps you need to take. The calculus step is not too bad.